the RTE Rugby Podcast, sponsored by Canterbury. See the new Irish men and women's rugby jerseys at canterbury.com. And you're very welcome to the RTE Rugby Podcast, ahead of the second round of the Guinness Six Nations Championship this weekend. Ireland going to Paris to take on France. We have Scotland against Wales and England uh, taking on Italy. Delighted to be joined by Donald Lennon and by Mike Prendergast, who is in Paris as we speak. I'll get the thoughts of the lads in just a second, but we do have team news. And the big news, obviously, is that Johnny Sexton is out. He suffered a mild hamstring strain in training yesterday. Joey Carberry comes straight in at number 10. And Michael Corcoran got the thoughts of Ireland head coach Andy Farrell. Um, it is what it is, and uh, that's that's the sport that we uh, that we, that we love. You know, there's always uh, twists and turns, especially within a within a Six Nations uh, competition. Uh, the competition is a long goal competition, spans over eight weeks for us. So there's always going to be things that we have to deal with. Um, obviously, Johnny's an important member of our group. Uh, obviously, being being skipper of the side. Um, uh, is is integral to to how we push forward with with many parts of um, our environment, but at the same time, this is just about the group. Um, Johnny will travel with us and uh, and and uh, and be as leading as he possibly can be. Uh, but this is about the group. Uh, it's it's a great it's a great development for us as a, as a team going forward as well. And uh, we still expect our, ourselves to be at our best in in Paris on Saturday. Obviously, we give it consideration, um, but Joey's been training really well there, as has as, as, uh, Jack as well. Um, so Jack comes onto the bench and Joey gets the opportunity to start. And can you just talk about France and what you're expecting from them at the weekend? Um, I'm expecting both sides to, to up it a notch or two. Uh, I'm expecting both sides to be at the best and hopefully... Um, you know we can put in a performance that uh, that'll give us a chance for 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 what is you know and rightly so everyone's building this up to 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 be a big game it's exactly where we want to be and uh, we we want to be at our best so that's that's what we're concentrating on so Andy Farrell there, right, gents. Um, Donald, uh, there were two positions uh, that we mentioned, I think uh, about a week back looking ahead to the Six Nations that Ireland really didn't want to suffer injury in. One was tight head and tight furlong and the second was out half and Johnny Sexton. Lo and behold, fate has dealt her hand. What do you think? Well, it was inevitable, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, look, a lot of people will see it as a, a disaster. Certainly, I think, um, you know, in a 50-50 game to start out, it does kind of tip the balance in favour of the... Uh, but that said, look, this was something that was going to happen at some stage. Uh, 18 months out from a World Cup, Joey Carberry is now running in the deep end in one of the greatest tests you're going to get. Uh, it doesn't become more difficult than France at the Stade de France in a, on a Saturday evening. So, um, look, timing from Johnny Sexton's point of view couldn't be worse. Um, no, but that said, you have Italy in two weeks' time. So it does give him a bit of time, let's say, before England and Scotland to, to get himself back into shape. But at that stage, the fact that Joey will have started at least one and maybe two internationals. Uh, Jack Carty gets an opportunity on merit, in my view. I think he's been playing well for Connacht on the bench. It is a setback, but at least the team know it now. Obviously, something happened. He was out for the press conference as, as captain earlier on in the week. So um, it, would, uh, it would appear as if something happened in training yesterday. Uh, but at least the team have, have two days to, to cater for it. Um, the so you're, putting, you're, start, you're putting on much more positive spin than, than I am, Donald. I said to you, oh, for this odd disaster, sure, with no chance now. But you're actually much more optimistic than I am. <laughs> well, but look, you, this is, this is what the professional sport is all about. I mean, you know, you go back. Uh, I remember Ron Nagar often spoke about his, his time in the Crusaders. They were playing the Hurricanes in a key game and they got five all blacks injured in training. And Nogara's jaw was trailing the ground. And uh, <laughs> Scott Robinson just caught a hold of him. He said, Listen, this is a brilliant opportunity. We have five fantastic young fellas ready to stand up. And they went out and they hammered the Hurricanes. So, look, uh, this is what sport is all about. I mean, Joey Cabri has had a horrific run of injuries over the past two years. Uh, to be fair, I would imagine he'd have liked to have a little bit more game time under his belt. I think he came on on 62 minutes uh, against Wales last week. But let's be honest, that game was in the bag at that stage. 
I prefer to go back maybe to the New Zealand game. He came on uh, into that game about uh, 15, 18 minutes to go. Ireland uh, were only a few points ahead of New Zealand, but he actually did really well in closing the game out. The only concern you have 18 minutes of action since that monster game against Wasps, I think, is going back to the, the tail end of October. So it's not ideal, but it is what it is. You've got to get on with it. And that is, and I'm sure Mike, better than anyone will know, in the professional game, these are the setbacks that you just got to accept and move on. OK, so Mike, is that how you view it? One man's misfortune, Johnny Sexton, is another's opportunity. And this is actually a chance for Joey Carby to step up and show just how capable he is. Yeah, I would. And I, I'd agree with, with Donald as well. Um, you, unfortunately, you've got to get on with it. You look at even, at, I suppose, the times has just gone past in terms of COVID, the reaction you've had to have. You, you're losing players uh, before games um, and you've just had, you've had to adjust, obviously, as Donald alluded to, um, with Joey having, I suppose, not too much time on the park. Um, that's something I suppose that is a small bit of a worry, but fortunately, he's a really accomplished footballer. Um, they can get himself out of out of uh, tight corners, and I think the way Ireland play with his skill set as well, and with the players that are around him. Um, for me, I kind of look at it as a, maybe it is an exciting thing. Obviously, if you lose someone like Johnny Sexton, the way the, f- the form he's in, uh, what he demands, his leadership, of course, he's he's going to be a loss. But look, these these scenarios are going to present themselves potentially in a World Cup. Um, in important games and I think um, to have especially in a key position like 10 to have you know more game time under you um, mm. in massive games for the short term it might look like it's 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 a hard blow of course but I think to the medium to the long term it's something that um, will really stand to, to Joey Carby and to Jack Carthy I agree with Donald who's, who's been playing really really well for, for Connacht in a similar enough system as well to how Ireland play so uh, I, I'm kind of I'm looking I'm looking at it from a I suppose a positive point of view as well in terms of the excitement it brings. Great. Well, you're just off the training ground, I know. So um, I don't expect you have gauged um, much French reaction to this. But just how do you perceive that France will, will take this? Um, Johnny Sexton this week has been talking about the attention that he was expecting to receive. Obviously, as a look, I'm well used to this. It happens everywhere, and the French equally as well. Be hyping him up. Do you think they're going to have to alter? their plans based on Joey Carberry, Mike, or do you think that they will still continue to do what they had planned to do regardless of... No, no, I, I think they'll still do what they, they, they plan to do. I think, mm. uh, especially the way DuPont defends. Um, if you notice, he defends in the front line a lot and they send mm. him as, as, as a sniper, we'll call it, to put pressure on on, on 10. Um, and I think, you know, they would have obviously spoken about Johnny a lot during the week. Um, that will change now. But in terms of... Um, in terms of how they will tactically, from a defensive point of view, from an attack point of view, I don't think it'll alter it a, a huge amount. Um, but as I said, it's, it's, um, it's an exciting one as well, although, albeit um, you're taking out a, a world-class player, especially, look, you look at their attack at the moment and he's, he's central and he's key to everything. Um, and with Joey having, I suppose, little game time, there will be that much, much more pressure. And that's something, I suppose, that... Um, the French might focus on a small bit in terms of he hasn't played. Maybe they look at it and say, look, his reaction, his catch pass might be a small bit off so we can get pressure on him. But um, I don't think they'll, they'll alter a huge amount of uh, as what, they're, what they've planned to do, I think. Sexton's absence, Donald, means that James Ryan will take the captaincy. Now, um, in your position, obviously, you know, he had this unbelievable breakthrough a year and a half or so, both with Leinster and with Ireland. Um, and then after being overlooked, by Warren Gatton and the Lions, Donald. It seems like he had to kind of go away and have a, a good long look at himself, maybe. But I think about where, where he could improve. Do you think that James Ryan has kind of uh, has stepped up in the last kind of couple of months in terms of pre- improved performance? And obviously, Andy Farrell clearly backs him as his captain still. Yeah, well, look, you talk about the last couple of months, but he's, his last few months have been interrupted badly by uh, concussion issues as well. He missed a lot of games for, for Leinster in the early part of the season. But uh, I have to say, I thought he was outstanding last week. Um, you know, his work rate was phenomenal. His partnership with, with uh, Ty Byrne uh, is, is an incredible. There's a lot of synergy there. And I think, but given his, his work rate at the breakdown, given his, uh, you know, I hate calling it the unglamorous work, but the amount of rocks he cleaned, the amount of tackles he made, the amount of energy he brought last Saturday, I thought it was the best performance from James Ryan that we've seen since maybe two years. Uh, look, I think he was extremely unlucky not to make the Lions tour. 
Uh, he probably had a bad game at the wrong time against La Rochelle in that uh, Heineken Cup semi-final. Um, but look, he's young and he's learned from that and he's come back. I think he's a bit bigger, even physically. Um, I'd have no worries about him. I thought he was outstanding. Uh, I mean, the debate, I'm sure, in camp was who starts next to James Ryan? You know, do we shift mm-hmm. Ty Byrne into the back row? Do we bring back Ian Henderson for a bit of a additional bulk? Uh, I think um, that Andy Farrell has done the right thing by leaving well alone, starting the pack that played last week. Uh, I just hope, you know, James Ryan, uh, that the captaincy doesn't impact him in any way. But look, I, I think he's been in the role before. He's more experienced now. But most importantly, given the game he played last weekend, all he has to do is continue from where he left off. And, uh, you know, I have no worries about him stepping into that function. I imagine uh, Paul O'Connell will be a big source of um, comfort, Mike, you know, in terms of, of advice, obviously, mm-hmm. in his position as well. Paul having captain the lines and whatever. Um, and I, I've listened to Paul O'Connell speak about James Ryan, and he has been very impressed, I guess, at, his, at the level of experience and maturity that he shows, even for still a relatively young player. Yeah, and just, just going back to Donald's point of the, the unseen work, and that's something that James Ryan, where everybody's talking about Ireland's ruck at the moment and ruck speed and three seconds and less than three seconds. And as as Donald alluded to, it's it's he's, a, uh, he's really, really efficient around the ruck in terms of, obviously, the carrier is where it starts. But Ireland's ruck, in terms of their system, um, James Ryan brings a huge amount to that. So that, that in turn, gives his backs... Um, and the attack that extra second or two so it's kind of it is that unseen work but it's the work that's the smaller detail that he he brings to the table which is he, he's he's got a huge work ethic huge work mm. ethic but he's really really efficient around the breakdown on top of obviously his his core uh his core values in terms of set piece and something but yeah I, I totally agree with with someone like Paul um you know in and amongst them uh those small little conversations um, you know, he's he's an intelligent guy. He obviously he's a good learner. He takes his 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 work on quite quite well. Sorry, very well, I should say. Um, but he's got you know, as as you alluded to, as you said, he's he's got Paul there to, I suppose, go and ask those those questions and and learn together. Um, and I'm sure he's 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 the type. Look, he's he's a young captain. I'm sure he's the opposite as well in terms of, you know, he's probably a, a challenging player as well. And and that's what you want as a coach, you know. And and you learn together. And you can see it. He's He's okay. He's he he's been through a, you know, a tough enough time and not going down the lines. I'm sure that had a, a, obviously an effect. But uh, as Donald said, I think especially you look at last week that that unseen work we'll call it, uh, making your teammates look better. As I would say, he's um, he's so efficient and he's so effective in, in those areas. It'll be a fascinating battle in the second row, um, Mike, between the Irish pair, Ty Byrne and James Ryan against Wocky and Valenza, who's an absolute monster of a player. You know, you talk about the power and the brute physicality of some of the second rows. I mean, this guy holds his own with pretty much anyone in the world right now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, it's actually a really good balance. And if, if you're if you're keeping someone like Bernie LaRue out of the team and out of yeah. the squad, you're doing something right. Willemse, obviously, is a powerhouse. I, I actually, I coached him in Grenoble for, he was with us for a couple of months. He came over with Birch, brought him over. Um, massively physical extremely good in around the, the mall in terms of the t- defence and attack. Um, and, um, and also, obviously, you've Tau Fien on, on the bench as well, which, you know, and, and other monsters, we call it, which brings huge physicality. But just, I suppose, just touching on, um, on Waki, he's a guy that we've seen over the last couple of years with Bordeaux and with France playing in the back row, second row, just an, a, a, an incredibly good athlete, incredibly good athlete, huge work rate, very comfortable on the ball. Um, you know, so I, I think they complement each other quite well. He gets around the park. Uh, he's, you know, in terms of his statistics, they're they're very high week in, week out. So they have a good balance there, I think. And as I said, Taufina brings a lot of weight coming off the bench, and you don't even have the likes of Bernie Larue in there, as I said. You know, so mm. they've huge depth in, in that position. You've also um, um, Flaman. You can bring him on second row or back row. He's he's adaptable in both positions. You know, sort of they have that strength and depth. Uh, Donald, you know, it was fascinating to see the speed of the ruck ball um, for Ireland against Wales last weekend with the pack so dominant. I think the average um, ruck ball speed was was less than three seconds, um, I read, during the week. So that's incredibly quick ball for Ireland constantly to have and they were so dominant. It's going to be an altogether different challenge for the pack this weekend against that French pack. There's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, I, I saw an interview after the game uh, with Sean Edwards and uh, immediately his mindset had shifted to this Irish game. And he focused in on the breakdown. 
I mean, I think France are aware that once Ireland get possession, it's very difficult to get it back off them. I mean, uh, they averaged 217 passes in the three, three games in the first series in appalling conditions. And I think people watching on television, you know, we were lucky enough to be there. Uh, the conditions were far worse at ground level in the Aviva last week that people uh, appreciated at the time. Yet, Ireland made 237 passes in those, uh, in those conditions. And I mean, you know, holding the ball for that length of time, it stresses defences, it forces them into making more tackles and it wears them out. You're sort of playing with a view to capitalising at it in the last 20 minutes of the game. I think France will be hugely aware of that. I think Ireland faced a totally different animal at the breakdown uh, against the French. Again, I think Wayne Pivac coming into the game uh, he highlighted during the autumn that he felt that uh, Wales had a weakness in that they didn't have enough guys with the physical um, either intent or attributes to clean out rooks. France, on the other hand, are completely opposite. That is mm-hmm. one of Willemse's major strengths. Uh, mm-hmm. And I would also say Willemse, he looks a far more skilled player now than even when he came into the system. He was a, a typically big, strong. He played South Africa under 20s, I think, with Evan Etzebeth at the time. So um, yeah, that's I think, yeah, he, he's, his skill set has improved immeasurably. He looks a little bit slimmed down to me, maybe from 24 stone to 22 and a half. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you fellas like him smashing you at the rock, uh, all your detail has got to be spot on. So that whole area, the breakdown, the speed of rock ball, I think, was seventy-two percent of uh, the rock ball was over uh, with three seconds or less. So France are going to try and stop this at source. That's mm-hmm. going to be a big challenge for Ireland. Is that uh, something that just, you feel on the Valencia, Ed Mike? Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just to add to that point, that I think you look at the makeup of the team in terms of their back row. They're after bringing in Cross for Cretton. Cretton is, is, I suppose, his strength is in the line out. Cross's strength is on the ground. So obviously they're looking to counteract that. And you've Jelanch, you've Aldred. Uh, Marchand the hooker is an incredibly good poacher so they have as we call them over here they're gratters uh, to poacher they've, they've gratters they've poachers all across the team even, even um, Mo Fana small little little 13 that's coming in uh, powerful guy really really good over the ball uh, Villiers unbelievably good over the ball Gail Fiku really good over the ball so they know that the, the huge challenge will be, will be at the breakdown as well and, and, and obviously trying to stop Ireland's attack, but it starts, first of all, with the collisions. And that's where I think, you know, obviously France, they're, they're big in terms of size. So once you get a collision, if you win that collision, you can ascend to, a, you can, sorry, afford to send one or two. And an area as well, um, a rock area they'll go at an awful lot is um, out in the edges. They retain a counter attack or counter rock an awful lot. And that's where Ireland like to play now. They like to get to the edges. So that's why it's going to be, it's going to be a fascinating game. Which I'm looking forward to it. Your position, Mike, um, I don't think anybody's been able to come up with an answer to this, so I'm not expecting a foolproof one for you. How do you stop Antoine Dupont? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's Handy a one good, for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. He probably didn't play his best game last week. He played it, We played him actually the previous week. It wasn't his best game either. He'd COVID for a couple of weeks, but that's the worrying thing. He's still, you know, at important, at important moments last week against Italy when, I suppose, France weren't at their, at their best best. He was still able to, you know, bring out good moments, big moments. And, you know, every team talk about him around the rock, you know, keep your eyes on him, keep the pressure. But he just has, a, has an ability. He's reading of the game. He's actually something he is, is. He's an incredible athlete. He's an unbelievable athlete. He's quick. He's powerful. He's got great feet. He's got pretty much everything. Um, but when the game loosens up, um, that's when he kind of comes into comes into his, his best, I think, because that's where Toulouse plays. So, um you know, first and foremost, I think from the from a defensive point of view, Ireland, what they need to do and they've been doing it well, um, is just getting that extra second to slow that ball down. And I know every team will look about it, and I know every attack coach will talk about it. But um, if you leave half doors open, and to Anton Dupont is the guy that you know, and especially I've noticed as well over the last couple of games, uh, especially against New Zealand last week, and the weather had a lot to do with it last week. But they started playing a lot off nine, and once they got that big carry. And they got it, that ascendancy and they got in behind. It fractures the defence a small bit. It's around the rock, then he becomes a real danger, you know. So I'm sure mm. it's something that Ireland will uh, 
people have massively focused on this week. And I, I'm sure Dupont as well with the with the French coaching staff. Donald, we we'll look at Mac Hansen. He had a dream debut last week in many respects, you know. Um, but but he's going to be under even more pressure um, at the Stade de France this weekend. We saw Reece Zamet switch wings last week, and in, in Pivac's hope that he might be able to ruffle Hansen's feathers a bit. He didn't do that. But if you're Antoine Dupont, if you're into Mac. And you're looking at Mac Hansen here. He's a potential weakling still. And, and to take nothing away from his debut, he was man of the match. We know that. But this is going to altogether different tech for, test for Hansen. And I'm sure Antoine Dupont will look to target him. Yeah, look, there's no doubt about that. There's no secret. You've uh, a guy with one cap behind him coming in. You see, when you look at our Ireland have won nine games in a row. Mm. Seven of the nine have taken place in the Aviva. Right. The two away games were in Italy and Scotland in empty stadiums. So this, not only for Mac Hansen, there's a lot of younger guys who've come through over the course of the last 18 months. But in effect, you take Hugo Keenan, for example. He's been absolutely brilliant in, in, in my view. Um, but he hasn't played away from home with uh, 80,000 people screaming and roaring. It's just a different dimension. Uh, I look at, I, I think, Freddie Stewart, fullback for England last week. He, the one thing, I, you know, I've been watching him with Leicester in the, in the Gallagher Premiership. Imperious under the high ball. He's six foot four. He's very imposing physically, but he had a bit of a mare in uh, in Murrayfield. Poor conditions, admittedly, but it's it's just a different uh, examination. So there's no question. Mac Hansen will be uh, targeted early on. Uh, France do kick a lot of ball. Mm. They didn't kick yeah. particularly well last week. Um, and Dupont, as as Prendy has alluded to, you know he has been off the pace. But my God, there's still specific. At times in games when his influence is phenomenal. And um, so it's it's not just Mac Hansen. I think there's a whole range of Irish players who this is the biggest test they will have faced since the, the pre-pandemic day. I mean, it's it's we're just short, I think, a week of two years since we've had um, Ireland play away in, in a Six Nations capacity in front of a full crowd. And that's going to be a factor. The one thing I, I felt, and, and Prendy, again, you're in a great position to comment on this, it's just watching the telly, the, the, the France game against Italy, uh, a horrible day, a Sunday afternoon, not exactly what the French like, but I thought the singing of Le Marseillaise, even on the telly, it came across as if the message I got was the whole French public are behind this team. We all know they're on a mission in terms of the World Cup in 2023, but I thought there was a mission there, or a message going out, lads, we're behind you. Uh, I think, you know, they struggled. They were only, was it whatever it was, they, Point. They, before they Pointers got... Pointers at half-time, yeah. Yeah, mm. I mean, they, 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 before they got that try, just before the break. But the French crowd never turned on them. Do you know what I mean? They stayed with them to the end. They didn't get the bonus point at the, into, the, into the 60th minute. Yet, uh, I think there's that synergy there as well. So I think the French public, they know their rugby. They know this is the pivotal game in the Six Nations, the biggest game that France have had at, uh, at home in the Six Nations for two years. Uh, so I think there'll be tests all over the pitch for uh, the young Irish players in particular. Franny, do you want to pick that up? Yeah, you're, you're spot on. Don't let the, even look at the, the viewership last weekend over here. There was 7 million people that watched the Italian game. That's for the Italian game. I know Sunday is a quiet day here. Quite day here. People generally stay at home. But it's the game is really, really snowballing over here. Um, and a lot, there's a lot of things that have come together in terms of alignment at a good time, in terms of Bernard Laporte looking to, I suppose, get that relationship with the, with the top 14 um, with the top fourteen clubs um, being aligned to them. Fabian Galte, who's their head coach, who, had, who was with Toulon and, a co and Montpellier and clubs, he had coached her and he saw, um, I suppose, what needed to be, what needed to be fixed. So from a point of view of trying to create those relationships and, and be aligned, they've got that right. The World Cup here is on here in 2023 um, and everything is, is, is leading towards that. And even you go back a number of years ago when you speak about it as foreign coaches over here that, you know, to play with France, the French players, um, if they played, they played. There wasn't a massive, massive push for it. Now you look at it and every player, because they see there's something big coming. There's a new generation of players coming on. Uh, the coaching is getting better. The game is, big, is, is better over here for different factors. There's more, the ball is in play longer. There's more 4G pitches. So the game is played at a higher, higher tempo. The younger generation want detail. 
they, I suppose over a number of years, they, they've seen why are Ireland, why are England, why are Scotland, Wales, why are they beating us? We've incredibly good rugby players, athletes, and they're just after bringing that all together at a, at a really good time. Um, and it's something that's building. And as Donald said earlier on, the public know this, they see this, um, and, and, and you can feel that, you know, and that's where, and I agree, that's where Sunday is going to be, uh, or Saturday, sorry, it's going, to, it's, going to be, it's going to be something different for guys like Mac, Mac Hansen. Um, Hugo Keane, as you, as you said, Donald, it's um, 80,000 people and, and the players feel this. So as I said before, you had players that were being picked for France. If they weren't, they weren't getting too disappointed. Now, that's why they have massive strength in numbers. You look at all the positions, they're three and four deep. They've guys now that want to play. You saw the, the, the squad they sent to our, our Australia was so competitive. So once you have that, the bar gets pushed. The, 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 the public are in behind them. They have a massive goal at the end of this, and it's the World Cup. So there's, there's a lot of good things going on in French rugby at the moment. Can I ask you, Mike, um, Rassing hammered Brave uh, 57-19 in the top 14 last weekend. Vakatawa scored a try. Are you surprised Vakatawa is not straight back in, involved in some respect? I mean, I thought he might have start, but he's, he hasn't even made the bench. I am, to be honest, yeah. Um, look, over the last kind of six months or so, he's, he's had injuries. Um, he probably <coughs> jumped out of a small bit of form because of that. But over the last few weeks, you could see it, he's, especially last weekend, um, he came back to us. He was really, really disappointed. And um, he kind of back to where where he let, I suppose, let where he was going back six, eight months ago. Um, and I thought also just from the combination of, of Gail and Virami playing together week in, week out. Um, and he just, you know, he's he's got that X factor. He's he's um he can give him a lot more wit under game as well with his with his passing skills and 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 players around him, defenders just have to respect him a lot more so that can create space on the edges. And I, I thought they would Saturday thankfully is going to be a lovely dry day. So even with the conditions, I thought they would go with him. But um, but obviously, Fabi Gatti sees sees something different. Um, in saying that, Mofana has been has been extremely um, consistent this year with um, with Bordeaux. But he's just a small bit of a, a different kind of profile. So yeah. Um, yeah, I am surprised. I am surprised. To be honest, I'd say I'd say Bundy and Ringrose are Donal are doing hopscotch dances that he's not starting the centre. To be honest with yeah, those look. Be. I mean, Vakatawa lit up the championship a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, that combination with Fiku. Fiku is, is almost a player reborn. It, we, he came in as a young fellow when he was in Toulouse and he was the bee's knees. He played for the French 20s. Everybody was talking about him. Yeah. But he, he never actually got to the heights that was expected at the time. Uh, to be fair, since he, you know, he was in Stade Francais, he's now moved, obviously, to uh, Mike's influence there in, in, in Rassi. Far from it. Been, must be. He's, must be. Far he's, from he's, it. He, He's been played out of his skin for the past two or three years. I know Sean Edwards kind of made him captain of the defence. And, you know, to be given uh, areas of responsibility and leadership roles like that, it brings a player on. Uh, just as a, a little aside, I had to, a, a chuckle there when Mike was talking about the increased ball and play time. I think in France, she played with two balls, as uh, Rog found out in, uh, in, against Biritz last week. I mean, yeah. if you haven't seen this on, on YouTube, bizarre. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. The last Amazing. minute of the game, basically, uh, both uh, the, 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 the Biritz hooker scores and um, Carbarno, the scrum half, kicks another ball out. Both teams are celebrating. I think it's... Uh, that's, why you're, you're, that's, that's, the only, that's why you never get bored of French rugby over here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, 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 it's incredible. But look, I do agree. Vakatawa, I think if I was Andy Farrell, a slight uh, uh, sigh of relief. But that said, I, I don't know a whole lot about uh, Moy Fana, but uh, he was in Australia during the summer. And I've no doubt the likes of Galtier and Sean Edwards wouldn't be picking him unless they think that he has something specific that will add to the French team in this game. They know exactly what Vakatawa has to offer. And maybe it's just, look, an element there. Sometimes when you have a group, these two matches are a kind of a block in themselves. And they've had this group, let's say, gearing for Italy. But I think with Ireland, it's sort of at the back of their minds. And therefore, you promote for within the group that you have. And, you know, Mofana came off the bench last week and he did fine. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that works out. And, and just on that, only, even you look at it, you know, I, I thought actually uh, Vermi might, get onto the bench, but they've went with a 6-2 as well, split. So that kind of changes things up with, with Cretton and, and Flammer on the on the back on the on the bench to cover mm -hmm. the back five. So um you know you're looking at two world class operators in terms of a line out as well, you know. So it changes the dynamics a bit, you know. 
Yeah, and I think I, I, I think that also it focuses on the fact that I think France are going to take Ireland on at source. You know, take them on in the set piece, really? take them on in the breakdown, stop them monopolising uh, possession. And, uh, you know, that I think that 6-2, it screams out like that. I also think, you know, if you're the likes of Cyril Boy, Julian Marchand and uh, Unia Tunio, all they're hearing for the last six months is this brilliant Ireland front row like Porter, Kelleher and, uh, and Furlong. Listen, they have been outstanding, but I can imagine uh, the likes of Rafael Ibanez, former captain, hooker, manager, just kind of pulling those three aside after every session and just saying, lads, let's see how good these three are. Um, mm. So that in itself, I mean, the scrum, Mike, it's, it's still a big psychological thing in France. Um, it, and, and as Des Fitzgerald, former Ireland prop, said to me one time, the scrum only matters when you don't have one. I, I agree, <laughs> don't lie. I, I think set piece and area, they're going to go, go after Ireland. And if you looked at even last week off line out, which is something we probably don't see a huge amount, but, um, and I know the weather had a bit to do with it, but three or four times Italy in the first half came off the top and they just flooded players through to the nine. And they actually got caught. So you're playing off a really slow ball then. So and that's just that's that's something I haven't seen as much. So um, I'm sure that's something that they'll they look to, to put pressure on there. Obviously from from very from first sources actually in the lineup. But it was just interesting to see uh, Vardy the 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 nine for Italy. He got caught three or four times with the likes of walking and stuff just flooding through. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. And obviously scrum is still you know it's a massively uh, passionate part of the game over here. Um, two more quick ones before we finish up, uh, gents. And um, Donald, briefly, do you expect Scotland to continue um, in the manner in which they beat England to, to make it two wins out of two? Typically, Scotland, and I, a, a, a friend of mine who you know well um, from Scotland said, oh, it'd be just like us now after beating England to go out and lose to Wales this weekend. That's the fear in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's back to the wall in, in, in Wales. They've had a horrible time of it in the 20s. Uh, our 20s put 54 points on them in, in Musgrave Park last Friday night. Uh, I expected Ireland to, to beat Wales and beat them comfortably, which they did. I think we're all in agreement it could have been even more. I think Welsh rugby is in a bad place at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Scotland, they managed to beat England. Like They were under huge pressure going into that game because of, of injuries within the England setup. Scotland were actually favourites to win that game. Uh, they didn't play particularly well. I still think their front five is vulnerable, but yet they came out of it. Uh, so look, I think Scotland... Uh, in the last year, they've won away in Paris and they've beaten England and Twickenham. So they're kind of reversing the trend that had been going on for years. They haven't beaten uh, Wales in Cardiff, in the Principality, uh, Millennium, whatever you want to call it, since 2002. They did win in Clinetley uh, mm -hmm. two years ago, but that was, again, an empty stadium. So, look, I think Scotland are making incremental gains. Uh, they're attacking shape is, is brilliant. You can see Townsend has had an impact there. I would still have question marks over their front five, but I think they'll be good enough to cope with Wales because Wales aren't exactly man-eaters in that position either. Um, finally, Mike, um, Eddie Jones, the, the noise have been out from all week. I don't know if you saw Clive Woodward said this guy is pretty much, you know, he's untouchable now. What does he need to do for, to, for us to get the sack? There's been articles written suggesting he made a, a hames of it by taking off Marcus Smith and um, when he did for George Ford with England seven points up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, I guess, how England respond. Maybe not this weekend against Italy, but over the next couple of uh, match rounds. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I saw he, he did come under pressure. But look, um, if they'd went on and won, I don't know if those questions would have been would have been asked. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, obviously that was something that was pre-planned that they, they would take him off after. I didn't see the game personally myself because we were playing at the same time and just saw highlights of it. But um, yeah, look, you can never write off England as well. I, I just think mm -hmm. they'd, they'd, they'd probably bring out a huge performance, get a bit of confidence back in. Um, and I do see them moving forward, to be honest with you. They've, they've too many, um, there's too much quality there. Um, and I think as the, as the tournament goes on, they will build, albeit they yeah. had a poor performance last week, but, um, you know, they'll take the learnings from that. Yeah, they will, Don. I guess this is the risk that's finally, you know, if you take Eddie Jones' um, approach to dealing with the media, which is he can be quite snotty at times and quite dismissive of the media, if things go badly, the media will only be too happy to kind of, you know, mm. hang, draw and quarter him, if you like. <laughs> Well, he is, he is a caustic character. He likes winding people up. There was a stage last year, I thought, he was trying to get himself fired. He obviously is a great contract, but he'd be paid out for the full term of his contract. But yeah. uh, he is under pressure. And I mean, 
Look, I, I find it quite fascinating in, in, in England. You know, you look at, say, Ireland from a midfield, a, a midfield perspective, like uh, Andy Farrell had to pick between, say, Robbie Henshaw, a uh, three-test line over the summer, Ireland Player of the Year last year. Bundy Ackney was playing out of his skin and has increased his skill set. Gary Ringrose, and then James Hume, who's coming through. Behind that layer, you've got Stu McCluskey and Chris Farrell, right? England have been throwing a time, we're trying to put a central combination together since Will Greenwood and Mike Tyndall played in the 2003 World Cup. There's mm. 13 teams in the Premiership in England. You know, you compare that. We have four sides over here. Scotland have two to pick from. Wales have four districts to pick from. I mean, England should be spoiled for choice. Mm. Yes, uh, from a selection perspective, um, Eddie Jones, you know, he's, he's, he seems all over the place at the moment. But look, he has a brilliant track record. He's proved people wrong in the past. I have no doubt by the time Ireland, and bear in mind, we've got to go to Twickenham as well. By the time we get there, I think they'll have yeah. two wins under their belts. So um, I wouldn't be writing England off. Yeah, and if you get as well, don't I agree with you. I think if, if Tuolagi managed to get himself yeah. back fit as well, he's, he's, a, he's a crucial part of what they do. And, and also, I agree in what you're saying there in terms of, especially centre partnership, there has been a lot of change. Um, with Marcus Smith, you know, you're, you're, you're going to go, it looks like they're going to go for him, and, and rightly so. They're going to have to get a settled midfield there. But I think to Tuolagi, when he's there with Smith and with whoever Slater, whoever they're going to go with, you know, it does become a, a more dangerous animal, I think. Brilliant. Um, lads, it's been an absolute pleasure. Really looking forward to the game. Just, Mike, I presume you're entertaining. Your, are you hosting a few Irish over the weekend? There's no, there's no uh, top 14 game. So will you be uh, there, out and about or what's the plan? There is. There is. Un, un, well, fortunately, we're playing and it's before him. It's a, it's a, a game that was called off at Christmas. So ah. Playing Paul just beforehand, so um, right, I won't sorry. even get to the game. Unfortunately, I have to watch it in the box. But, Jesus, uh, well, I, te- I tell you, Hugh, if you turned up in Paris in your James Bond number that you're wearing there, I'd say, <laughs> geez, you'd get in anywhere. The Moulin Rouge, what... would, the Moulin Rouge would know what hit. <laughs> I'm just trying a new look, Donald. You're obviously impressed, yeah. yeah <laughs> suit you. I tell you, it does. It does. It does I exactly. Either that or you had no short wash to time as usual. <laughs> I think we'll fall down on the ladder. What do you reckon? Um, gents, yeah. a pleasure. I'm, uh, Mike, thanks so much for making the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, uh, we'll do it again soon, hopefully, and to Don Lennon as well. Enjoy the match on radio and online, wherever you follow. Um, best of luck to the Irish team, obviously, and all the matches this weekend. Talk to you next week. The RTE Rugby Podcast, sponsored by Canterbury. See the new Irish men and women's rugby jerseys at canterbury.com.